The Dire Trojan gets an upgrade, Ryanair loses $5 million, WordPress gets owned and then patched, and over 350 Wi-Fi routers potentially vulnerable to a wicked new exploit. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. I'm Darren Kitchen. This is ThreatWire for Friday, May 1st, 2015. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. And I'd like to start with a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the relaunch of this show. We are so proud of this awesome community. And if you're new to ThreatWire on the Hack5 channel, that's because we did this for a year on TechFeed, and now we're bringing it back, and we are just so excited. So let's get started. Got yourself a router from the likes of D-Link or TrendNet, Asus, or some 300 others using Realtek chipsets? Yeah, if so, you might find this story pretty Pretty interesting, I know I did. There's a new vulnerability that's been discovered in the software development kit for Realtek Semiconductor chips that could, if made use of, make a ton of routers vulnerable to code execution. There's nearly half a million of these devices potentially running the vulnerable Realtek software, as found through a search of Shodan. If you haven't seen it, it's the search engine for internet devices. And basically what it comes down to is this component called Mini GD. It's part of the Realtek software development kit for their RTL81 series of chips. And the problem is that it doesn't properly sanitize user data and if exploited would allow an attacker to actually run code on the system, on the Wi-Fi router with root privileges, the highest, the most administrative root privileges. Furthermore, the exploit doesn't require authentication Yikes. The vulnerability was discovered by researchers from HP's Tipping Point, and the team claims that they tried several times to report the bug privately to, for, to Realtek for like months before finally giving up and just making this public. And there are over 350 devices listed on Wikidev using the potentially affected chipsets. The vulnerability is known to exist in version 1.3 of the SDK, and older versions may suffer from the same bug. Short of a firmware update, I guess, from Realtek, there really isn't a you know, they haven't made a statement and there isn't like a permanent fix, but one mitigation might be to disable UPnP and restrict which machines might have access to the vulnerable device. Uh, you could also disable the ability to manage the router from the web if that's an option on your device. Or if you have one of the potentially vulnerable devices from the likes of D-Link and TrendNet, you might kind of consider putting on some alternate firmware uh, like DDWRT and of course OpenWRT. The Dire Trojan just got an upgrade. This is some malware that has been extremely effective in online banking phishing, stealing millions of dollars, and even circumventing two-factor authentication since 2014. And this new variant that's been discovered is possible to thwart anti-malware techniques known as sandboxing. That's basically when you run code in some sort of virtual machine so that you can see what it does before letting it wreak havoc on your actual machine. Now, the new variant detects these sandboxes by checking to see how many processors or cores it has. And if there's only one, then it's gonna quit and actually not do its attack. Uh, see, most modern machines have like two, four, or even more cores, while sandboxes typically have just one. So, cat, meet mouse. Irish airline Ryanair recently suffered a cyber attack with hackers stealing some $5 million. The money, which apparently came from the funds that the company uses to buy parts and fuel, was transferred to a bank in China. Officials are mum on how the hack was perpetrated, but it sounds like wire fraud, given the fact that Dublin's Crime Asset Bureau is assisting in recovering the money from its counterpart agencies in Asia. Just in case you're curious, $5 million is only enough to fill up 200 Boeing 737s. Ryanair has like 400 of those birds. That's a lot of jet fuel. WordPress operators can breathe easy once again because a critical vulnerability was patched in the recently released version 4.2.1. You see, a cross-site scripting vulnerability would have allowed attackers to compromise your WordPress site if a maliciously crafted comment was left on your page. The security researchers who uncovered this exploit had previously documented an interesting vulnerability in which an attacker could use a Google Analytics plugin to do server-side execution. That's some pretty bad stuff that would allow an attacker to own your site in short order. But since version 3.7, WordPress has featured automatic background updates, which will apply security patches without any user intervention. So if you are running a WordPress site, you should probably make sure that you have automatic background updates enabled. I've put some helpful links in the description. Our featured comment of the day comes from Dennis G, who in response to the notion that phishing may be a sign of internet literacy or perhaps a generational thing that we'll grow out of, and Dennis writes, quote, I don't think it's the ignorance, but the arrogance of the end user thinking that they are smart enough to spot an attack, but phishing is crafty and often hits people with high levels of access. 
So true. I know you guys at home watching are smarter than the average bear. In fact, most commenters uh, posted that they were within the top 10% of the fishing quizzes that we uh, linked to. But let's not let those skills lead to arrogance because nothing online is static and you gotta be ever vigilant. Uh, so thanks again, Danis, for your comment. If you have any thoughts on today's stories, please leave them below. Before I go, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the show so far on our Patreon. If you find some value from the show and you can spare a few cents an episode, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash threatwire. We are hoping to reach our three-time-a-week milestone goal with a rotating cast of myself as well as Patrick Norton and Shannon Morris. So throughout the month of May, we're going to be bringing you a taste of just that, and I hope you will contribute to help us keep bringing this out to you completely independent and ad free. So if you can't donate though, it's totally cool because a subscribe, a like, a share, that goes a long way too. And so you can find all of the episodes, links to our social networks, and all of the other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. With that, I'm Darren Kitchen, and I will see you on the internet.